Hi guys, welcome back to a bookish weekend. My name is Brooke, and today we're going to be doing the mid-year check-in tag. So I was originally going to do the mid-year recap tag, but then I saw this one and thought this one was also great. Don't know why I didn't do the mid-year recap tag. I feel like that's just the one that everyone does, and so I wanted to do this one because it's a little bit different to what I normally see. Um, other questions, I don't know, just fit me a bit better, so that's why I have chosen this one. I might also do the mid-year free cut tag, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe not. I'm a little bit late doing this, this is already July, but I'm not too late, so it's okay. I've still got this. And I am wearing the same outfit as I was in my last video, and you know, you can't judge me because it's the same day that I'm filming this. And I'm not going to change outfit just because I'm filming another video. Anyway, let's just get into the video. So if you don't know, the major check-in tag is a tag which basically allows you to wrap up your reading year so far now that we're halfway through the year and yeah, just sort of check in with the way your readings are and see where you want to go and how you're feeling about it and all of that. So if you've watched my video, if you've watched my channel now since I started, you will know that I didn't read for three months because of A-level exams. So that was April, May and June I didn't read. Um, so that's why I might be a bit behind on my reading. But I think it's not been too bad of a reading year. A lot of books have felt very mediocre, so that's one downside so far. But I have also read a lot of really good books that I have read and given five stars. So let's just get to the questions, which I have my laptop down here, as always. And so the first question is, how many books have you read this year? And I'm just going to go into Goodreads and find out. I've read 37 books this year, which I'm really happy with. My goal of the year is 45, so I'm already way ahead of where I need to be right now to reach that goal, so we'll see how many batch books I do end up reading this year. Um, I do start university hopefully this year, so I might not actually be able to read that much starting September, but right now I'm really happy with how many books I have read. The next question is, what was your favourite book so far this year? And there are like five books I want to answer for this one, but I've narrowed it down to two, but I'm still not 100% sure if these are the, the two. The two that are my favourites of the year so far, but those two are... The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee and Grace and Fury by Tracy Banghart. You've seen me talk about this book so much since I saw my YouTube channel. It's amazing. I loved it. I loved it so much. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. I think I did anyway if I didn't know what's going on. And I just love them so much. I'm sure you've heard all about The Gentleman's Guide, but it follows Monty and Percy who have been best friends forever. It is set in the 18th century, I think, and they go on a tour of Europe and loads of antics and see you and they fall in love and it's just it's just great it's so great but it's so funny it's so entertaining and the relationship as i just said in my no i can't even review i love friends to romance trips if they're done well otherwise i hate them and this one was done so perfectly i loved it so much it's my favorite couples of YA that i've read so yes i really love this book Grace and Fury follows Nina's Nomi and Serena and they're in a world where women have no rights. This is a fantasy book and um, in this world there are things called graces who are the kings and the heirs, like women, who they choose to represent the perfect woman and they have to do it as the heir pleases. And yeah, it's just, this is such a great feminist fantasy. Nomi is really rebellious and Serena has been training her whole life to become a grace but then things go a bit wrong. And this was just such a great feminist fantasy that is so relevant to today's society. I really recommend it. It was great. Um, I, I'll keep saying I'm going to do a review of this book. We'll see if I actually get around to doing that. I'm hoping I will because I do want to do a review on this book. Um, but I love this book. I really recommend that you check it out. Um, as I said, there's a lot of books that I wanted to give in this place so I'm just going to mention them because I feel bad if I don't mention them. It's like Dream on Burning by Jennifer Latham, The Hazelwood by Melissa Alba, Onyx and Ivory by by Mindy Arnett. I think they're probably my top five books so far this year. Next question is, what is the most disappointing book that you've read this year? And for this one I have got Winter Song by S.J. Jones. This is a really recent read for me. Um, it's a labyrinth retelling, which is why I bought it. Um, but it just wasn't what I wanted. I love the beginning and I love the ending. But the middle, I'm like this isn't a small book. Like, it isn't massive, but it's, I think it's over 400 pages. So yeah, it's over 400 pages. And that's a lot of middle to get through that you don't like. Um, I love everything about Labyrinth, it's one of my favourite movies, like many others, and I just adore everything about it. So I was so excited when I heard about this book, but it's just... I feel like the relationship was very problematic at times, 
and it was just I'm all for poetic writing but this was just too much and I couldn't say to guess what she meant by the words that she was saying um I liked the folklore in it that was really great and I loved the goblins um thistle and twig in it but other than that there wasn't much about it there was a good piece of view that I read that summed up my feelings in this book perfectly so I will link that down below if I can find it again because this book was just really disappointing I might read the second one I mean I have the second one Shadow Song because I bought them at the same time because I was so excited for a labyrinth retelling but maybe this was really disappointing so yeah. The next question is what genre have you read the most this year? So obviously I've read YA but I constantly say that's not a genre that is a age range thingy um so I'm not going to count that um but I do think the genre I have read most this year is fantasy. I love fantasy books so much they're my favourite type of books. Um I have read a lot of contemporary this year but I still think I've read more fantasy. So yeah, anyway, go with fantasy. So the next question is name a newly discovered favourite author and for this one I have got... And for this one I've chosen Simon James Green who is the author of Noah Can't Even and Noah Would Never I think is the sequel. I haven't got it yet so I'm not entirely sure but if you have seen my book review and book talk on this book which I just filmed um, you'll know I love this book so much and the writing style is just so funny and so unique and so relatable and so realistic that I just loved it and it's on the screen. I feel like what I've seen of him online just seems so nice and authentic. Like I was watching an interview with him, and he just seemed such a like, great person. And I, missed, um, I tweeted him, and he replied, and he just seemed so nice and great so i really do like sam james green and i can't wait to meet him at yelp the next book is name in the most surprisingly good book you for this year and again i'm gonna go with noah can't even by sam james green this book it was amazing i wasn't expecting to love this book so much i was expecting it to be like a three star read i gave it five stars i can't wait for the sequel i just loved everything about this book it follows noah who isn't the coolest kid in school but he really wants to be popular and then one day his best friend Harry kisses him and it just sends his life into utter chaos and as I said when I was talking about the Jensen's Guide um friends to love as trope is one of my favorites if it's done correctly and again this is another great example when it is done perfectly that I'm just obsessed with Ooh, um the next question is name your favorite and most anticipated 2018 releases so I've got it down in my notebook here let me just find the page because I can't think of them off the top of my head Sea Witch is definitely one of them um Toil and Trouble, which is an anthology I'm excited for. The Ladies' Guys to Petticoats and Piracy, I think that's what it's called. The sequel to The Gentleman's Guide is definitely definitely one of them I'm looking forward to. And then Queen of Iron Darkness by Cassandra Clare is another one that I'm looking forward to. Uh, two of them are sequels. Queen of Iron Darkness is the final book in the Dark Artifices series. I haven't read Lord of Shadows yet, but I will read it soon. Um, Lady's Guide is the sequel to Gentleman's Guide. Sea Witch, I believe, is a Ursula Little Mermaid retelling, and then Toil and Trouble is a anthology of short stories based around witches and feminism and that sort of thing. So I'm very excited for all of those books. Number eight is what is your next biggest priority for reading? And other than trying to get my massive TBR pile down, because I have over 100 books on my TBR pile. Yep. Um, I'm definitely going to try and participate in more readathons. I'm participating in the Bionic Bibliothon, my TBR will be linked down below if you want to check that out. Um, also just to prepare for Yalk, there's a lot of books I want to read before I go to Yalk at the end of this month because I'm going to be meeting the authors hopefully, so yeah, that is my priorities. Next question is what has been your biggest highlight, bookish highlight, other than getting, preparing for Yalk, it's definitely something that I'm enjoying and loving. Um, finding hidden gems I weren't expecting to love has definitely been a really great highlight and just I think all the books that I have loved, I have loved so much and that makes me really happy. I mean, as I said before, there's been a lot of books I'm disappointed in, but the ones I've loved, I've loved. I think that's a great highlight as well. And finally, number 10 is Fuji Tag, and I'm not actually going to tag anyone for this one. I feel like lots of people have already done this anyway, or they've done the major free cut tag. So I'm not going to actually tag anyone, but if you want to do this, go ahead. I highly recommend that you do. And link your video down below if you do do it, because I'd love to check it out and see how your reading's going this year so far. So that's it for today guys, if you'd like to give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!